a vector valued function is continuous at t equals t naught if the limit as t approaches t naught of r of t is equal to r of t naught. This is really no different than our definition of continuity from calc 1. And it actually is saying that for the vector function to be continuous at t naught, then all three of my scalar functions also have to be continuous at t naught. Which means that to think about continuity, we could remember the continuity test and apply it to vector functions. The continuity test had us check three things to see if a function was continuous at a point, and the same three things will apply to vector functions. First off, r of t naught has to exist. Well, if r of t naught exists, it means all three scalar component functions exist. Two, the limit as t approaches t naught of r of t has to exist. Well, and again, that means all three scalar functions limit as t approaches t naught has to exist. And then the third step, the third thing to check is that these values that must exist have to be the same thing. Which is exactly what I've written here, that those values match, right? This limit must match R of T naught. And it means all three scalar functions limits match all three scalar functions function value. So, to test for continuity at a point, we can really look at continuity of all three scalar functions. The function r of t is called a continuous function or continuous vector function if r of t is continuous for all of the t in its domain. That's actually the same definition from Calc 1 applied to vector functions. Let's look at an example. Consider the vector function r of t equals cosine t, sine t, and then the k component sine t over t. Is r of t continuous at t naught? Well, just thinking about the continuity test. Number one, r of t must exist, so r of zero must exist. And, well, it doesn't. I get one comma, zero comma, you can't divide by zero. So r of zero does not exist, so this function is not continuous at zero. Interestingly enough, based on that last definition we saw, a function is called a continuous function if it's continuous over its own domain, well, very clearly, zero is not in the domain of this function. It's continuous everywhere else, so I would still call this a continuous function, even though it's not continuous at zero. One of my favorite kinds of questions from Calc 1 kind of looked like this. We were given a piecewise function with an unknown value and then asked, for what value is this function continuous everywhere? So here I have a vector function in two parts. One part, what we were just dealing with for all the t is not equal to zero, and then some vector v that we're gonna look for when t is zero. For what vector v is r of t continuous? Continuous everywhere. Specifically, I'm worried about being continuous at zero. Well, I need the function value, whatever I'm gonna write down for v, to match the limit as t approaches zero. So I take the limit as t approaches zero, and that's what I have to write down here. And so I need this vector v to be one, zero, one. And now, this position vector is continuous for all real numbers t. Below this video, you see another video where I actually go through this example a little bit in GeoGebra. The goal of that is to hopefully help you use GeoGebra as a graphing tool, and also I think this curve is kind of cool.